Hello, I'm Maddie and welcome to Hickling Broad, a beautiful spot in Norfolk and arguably the very best place to see one of the UK's wildlife legends. 36 years ago in an area not far from here, something really exciting happened. One of Europe's largest, most magnificent birds returned to the UK, the Eurasian crane or the common crane. But this was a pretty big deal because it hadn't been seen for over 400 years. common crane it really is quite a vision it's one of Europe's largest birds with a wingspan of sometimes over two meters so it's huge stands four foot tall it's grayish in color but it has these black wing plumes that sort of make it look like it has a bushy tail when it stood up and then it has oh you see that heron in fact the common crane was once or has been mistaken for a large heron because it's greyish in colour but it has these black wing plumes and also it's got a black head with a white streak and then a red crown on the top this red patch so yeah it's really quite impressive Back in the 80s, the cranes were first spotted by warden John Buxton, who then dedicated his whole life to keeping the cranes protected here in the UK. Now, John is no longer with us, but today I'm meeting another John, John Blackburn, and he is the warden at Hickling. And I'm gonna learn a little bit more about this habitat, and fingers crossed, see a crane for myself. The common crane at first returned about 36 years ago. So what was it that drove them away in the first place? So, I mean, they, I think they were good to eat, you know, in perfect... <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> they were tasty. Yeah. <laughs> so, they were hunted. Yeah, well, that's it, they were, yes. Uh, and then, uh, otherwise, it's, you know, loss of the habitat, the, the draining of the, the, the wetlands that they um, used, they inhabited. So, yeah, it's quite a, a big deal when first off half a dozen birds appeared and, and then took up residence. When they returned, obviously the wardens at the time, John Buxton, he mm. wanted to keep them protected and almost almost a secret to keep them safe. What were they doing? Someone did ask him about if there were cranes or about. I mean, anecdotally, he says, I would tell them, oh, so they thought there was a crane working on the sea defences along the road, you know. So. <laughs> the construction <laughs> crane. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> So I'm fortunate that the horses is quite a sizeable estate, a vast expanse of reed and sedge beds and grazing marshes that he was, you know, under his control and able to restrict um, access to and protect them from other predators and keep them keep a watchful eye on them really. If you could estimate, how many do you think we have now? A dozen or so years ago, the population built up into the, the, the low teens and now a little bit of an explosion. There's an estimate this year that we had nationally about over 30 pairs. Things are going from strength to strength. The cranes were discovered over two decades ago, so what is it that's keeping them coming back? Well, that is all down to the habitat here, and to keep it just the way the cranes like it, it has to be constantly managed by the likes of John Blackburn and his team. The sedge and reed beds provide the perfect nesting sites for the cranes, and that's because it's cut short throughout the year. This is ideal because they can make their nests on top, but still see up and over the vegetation, yet it remains protected by the longer vegetation around the sites. Beyond all the sedge and reeds you have this. Grazing wet marshland which is perfect for the common cranes to forage in. This provides them all of the insects and vegetation they could possibly eat. They're omnivorous so they're not very fussy. And beyond the marshlands you have arable land which provides them yet more food. And finally interweaving this mosaic landscape we have watercourses and these provide a barrier or another layer of protection for the common cranes. John what have you just heard? Well we just heard a single call of a crane distantly sort of beyond Stub Mill so We're listening out for the distinct trumpeting, almost bugle-like call of the common crane. And we're pretty sure we just heard it. We just heard one call, so yes. We're heading Look. over to the area where they might be. Might be now. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. We're actually inside the mill at the moment and we're gonna go up to the top because we should get a pretty good vantage point there. Up we go. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Whoa! We 
we're in the top of the mill. How did you get up? Yeah, if you straddle it as you do, yeah, and then they cross up onto the brick. Yeah. Ah. What? What an amazing view. Can you see some? Yeah. On the ground. Ostriches from wow. here. and out of the wind now because to get closer to the cranes we're going to have to be very quiet. John for taking me on this adventure around Hickling Broad. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more just like this. Stay curious and I'll see you soon.